I'm Kumar Dittal and in charge of the Heart and Lung Transplant Program at Kaveri Hospital in Chennai. I'm going to speak to you about the need for artificial mechanical support for heart and circulation in the context of heart failure. At every beat, the adult heart pumps a third of a cup of blood, equating to over 6,000 liters of blood over a 24-hour period. And it's remarkable that this organ, organ can do this throughout life. Unfortunately, there are many medical conditions whereby the heart fails to pump sufficient blood, which contains vital nutrients such as oxygen and hormones, to supply the needs of the organs and all the tissues in the body. And this can occur either in an acute setting or in a chronic setting. Heart failure in the acute situation can arise from, for example, a heart attack, or from a viral illness, or even rarely because of pregnancy. Whether in the acute or chronic setting, if the patient continues to deteriorate despite maximal medical therapy, including percutaneous interventions, then the patient may be a candidate for further circuitry support. When these options are inappropriate or exhausted, then more invasive therapy can be considered in the form of artificial support for the heart and the circulation. In its simplest form, circuitry support can be achieved with the use of something called an intra-aortic balloon pump. This is a catheter which has a balloon at its very tip and is placed most typically via a large artery in the groin and sits, the balloon tip sits in the aorta in the chest and is triggered by the heartbeat to inflate and deflate and thereby easing the function of the heart. The next level of support is something called ECMO, which stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation and essentially represents an artificial lung and a pump outside of the body. This can be configured to either support the lungs that are failing and this requires two large cannulae or tubes, if you will, that are placed inside two major veins in the body so that blood, blood can be taken out, oxygenated, and returned back to the body, or to help both heart and lung failure or heart failure by way of what we call VA ECMO, whereby blood is taken out from a major vein and inserted back into the aorta after it's been oxygenated out of the body and then pumped back in. And this, of course, in the, for the lung has been used extensively throughout this COVID a pandemic where many patients have had benefit from it to either recover or to be bridged to transplantation. In majority of these pumps, the only thing that exits the body is a drive line or the electrical cable that is then attached to a controller or a console, which then makes the pump function and it has in it batteries that are typically rechargeable. The patients are able to carry these controllers either in a small bag on their shoulders or it's strapped to a belt with the appropriate batteries in place also. And once the patient is better after this implantation, they can be discharged home and are taught how to look after themselves with frequent home and clinic visits to make sure that their ongoing care is at its very best. Now the medical conditions whereby just supporting one or both ventricles with one or two devices is inappropriate or insufficient and in these cases we can resort to a single device that can support both ventricles or both pumping chambers by using what's called the total artificial heart which requires removing the pumping chambers of the heart and implanting this device in as a single device. There are at least two commercially available such devices available, um, but however, the costs are quite significant. So advances in this technology have led to a significant reduction in what were the most common complications after VAD implantations, which is really that of uh, infection, particularly of the drive line, which I mentioned was this ex exiting cable, and of course, bleeding and typically in the form of bleeding in your intestine or in your brain and giving you a stroke. These uh, comorbidities or side effects from implanting artificial devices have, are now remarkably lower than they used to be. When implanted at experience centers, the results of saving more lives and returning patients to a better and longer quality of life has been remarkable. The therapy is used increasingly in Europe, Australia and North America. And in the latter, it is being increasingly used more and more for destination therapy where patients who are ineligible for transplantation and have ongoing end-stage heart failure 
can now have recourse to this therapy that allows them to have a better quality of life and live longer. This technology is also available in India as it is at Calvary Hospital and even in India the numbers are slowly increasing notwithstanding the expenditure. Thank you.